The Centre for Alternative Technology started in 1972. Our founder, Gerard Morgan Granville, was really concerned how society was using technology. So Gerard wanted to found a living community that would live with the emerging alternative technologies to find out which ones really worked. We're looking at the biggest transformation of society we've seen since the Second World War. We have to prepare for that. We have to understand the technologies and have the numbers to make sure we have to make the right decisions when the crunch time comes. What you see around you now is the evolution of that process today where we have a display circuit that tries to explore the issues, climate change, habitat and so forth, but most importantly to explore the solutions that people can take up at all tiers of society from government solutions down to what people can do in their own homes. So what, what we're doing now is we're uh, continuing to expand the visitor circuit because we still want to convince vast numbers of the general public that there are solutions to the challenges, but we're actually expanding the academic side, the residential courses side. We're teaching plumbers to become solar water heating installers, electricians to install photovoltaics. That is kind of where people who really believe in things uh, are, they're kind of what's happening. I don't want to go to university where it's all in theory, I want it to be something that's really where people are living out what they do in practice, which CAT is. It's about teaching you not to necessarily be an architect, but how to, say, work with an architectural practice, or to build your own house, or, or you can home in on a specific technique such as building with straw bales, and you pick modules, there are about... Um, there must be about 20 modules and you only pick eight to do within the course. So you'll get some people that come out really, really technical and some people that come out more knowing about environmental policy and so on. I run a, um, a timber framing company with my husband, so I'm hoping there's going to be of some benefit to that really because obviously you know, we're, we're interested in, in building in an eco-friendly way. So. At LAMAS, we're going to be using many of the skills and the techniques that have been developed here at CAT. CAT is continuing to lead the way in educating for sustainable architecture and sustainable technologies. There's been numerous spin-offs from the Centre for Alternative Technology. There's been whole food shops, building companies, renewable electricity companies, car share schemes. One of the most remarkable spin-offs from CAT has been the EcoDovey project, which is managed by Andy Rowland. In some sense, Ecodovia has grown out of the Centre for Alternative Technology as being one of the spin-outs. The issues that CAT talks about to the world being made manifest locally. So, you know, we'll be trying to help people put on solar panels or whatever in our own community. I, I guess most people, I would say, are passively supportive of the kind of changes, the kind of development that we're kind of trying to bring about. And you, and you can get to see that passive support in all the various sub-communities around. One of the limits to what we can achieve here is the availability of affordable housing. Property prices have tripled, more or less, in the past four or five years, but our salaries have gone up about 7% in that period. Nobody can keep up with the, the rising prices of property, but we think that um, affordable housing should also be ecological housing, and ecological housing shouldn't be the preserve of the middle classes. And the two are compatible, so what we're looking to do is develop a vision for how we can prove that affordable housing is ecological housing.